All right, uh, morning. This is Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Peter Rusevi, Wireless Technology Analyst, and we're talking about 5G and, and specific, well, we're talking about 5G. <laughs> so uh, I have a question for you, uh, Peter. Why is spectrum sharing a poor choice in the 5G space? Spectrum sharing, well, it depends what kind of spectrum sharing you mean. Uh, the uh, contemplated spectrum sharing uh, by the Department of Defense refers to a technology right now that doesn't current doesn't exist. Uh, there are other than what's being done in CBRS spectrum that's at three and a half gigahertz, and that's the citizens band um, citizens uh, broadband radio service. Uh, that is a form of spectrum sharing, but it's not. Um, the type that the DOD would like to use moving forward. They would like, they envision a system um, where military systems can use the spectrum for radar and other military operations, but when they're not using it, that, that spectrum capacity could be used by commercial networks. So there's just no way to do that efficiently with commercial 5G networks at this time. So in that spectrum that we're speaking of is in the three to four gigahertz range, I assume? Yes, CBRS oh. was originally contemplated in uh, a notice of proposed rulemaking by the Federal Communications Commission in 2012. And it's only now in 2020 that the license portion um, of that band was, is being made available. It's a three tier system where government has the highest priority licensed users have the next priority. And then if that spectrum is not being used by either of those two entities, then um, generalized authorized, general authorized access users can use it in a um, somewhat unlicensed uh, mode of operation. The whole system is quite complex mm -hmm. and really was a very um, ambitious uh, spectrum um, experiment that um, it remains to be seen how widely it's used, but uh, there is some amount of enthusiasm, but it, it did take a long time. And similarly, any new type of more advanced spectrum sharing is also going to take many years to develop. Uh, you know, a realistic time frame would be that we could spend the next three or five years uh, designing such a spectrum sharing system um, and then formalizing the specifications for 6G in, for deployment in the 2030s. But trying to do it now uh, with the goal that this somehow allows us to compete more effectively with other nations just doesn't make sense. Give me the highlights of how CBRS is supposed to work then. Because obviously this is the, the most uh, or the furthest along concept in spectrum sharing is it, will there be some kind of formal agreement of, um, you know, there'll be a, a month uh, ahead of time warning that the, the government's going to take over a certain part of the, the band and that anybody who's using it should switch to something else, or is it totally on the fly? Um, how, how is that supposed to work? Right. So let's just be clear right now, CBRS is specified and designed to operate in a very specific spectrum band. Um, mm -hmm. which is from 3.55 to 3.7 gigahertz. Okay. That's 100, uh, yeah, and that's 150 megahertz of spectrum and 70 megahertz of that, up to 70 megahertz can be licensed in each area. And uh, I'll explain oh, how area? CBRS okay. works, but it's not necessarily a good candidate uh, for this um, nationalized 5G network that people are thinking about or a wholesale network or futuristic DOD sharing system. Um, so um, I just want to just make it very clear that this operates for that band. It won't necessarily be used in other frequency bands. Of course, so, yeah. but, it, but it is a, an example of the, the, the government and other entities, non-government entities trying to work out this concept of spectrum sharing. Right, so, exactly. So it is a real-time system, and real the time. core of it is something called a spectrum access system, SAS, and it's a database. So any user of CBRS 
their base stations or access points have to communicate with this database mm. to um, find out if they can use the spectrum at that moment in time. And the way the um, Department of Defense, um, it is always the primary user of the spectrum. And, but it doesn't notify the SAS that it's using or not using the spectrum. Instead, there is a network of sensors deployed around the United States on the coast. And that's a capability called an environmental sense capability. And these are receivers that listen for Navy operations in that spectrum band. And if they detect the Navy using that band at that moment in time, then the ESC notifies the SAS and says, look, these channels are no longer available for commercial use. Um, okay. And then similarly, um, the um, unlicensed users, the generalized, general authorized access, GAA users, uh, before they can use the spectrum, they have to check with the database. Um, and similarly, the licensed users, if there's a license for using that spectrum band, then the licensed users have priority over the unlicensed users. So it's a three tier system, okay. um, effectively licensed, unlicensed, and the government. And then it's all controlled by this database, um, the SAS. Wow. So um, do you, has anybody proposed uh, creating a business model that would utilize this band? And, and it seems pretty spotty. <laughs> By the way, you're uh, like it could go yeah, away. It's just now rolling out. Um, it's it, it, you know how it's going to be used and and what are the greatest usages of it uh, really remain to be seen. Uh, yeah. The licenses were for much smaller areas down to a county level compared to cellular licenses. So smaller okay. entities um, do um, have access to the spectrum um, in a way that. Uh, licensed cellular systems were not previously available. So uh, people are envisioning private networks, you know, large um, companies, you know, okay. shipyards or airplane manufacturers or whatever might use the spectrum for, for their um, own usage. Um, you also had the cable uh, companies uh, obtain licenses. So um, companies like uh, Comcast or, or Cox could use CBRS uh, for some wireless deployment. Uh, also, uh, Verizon obtained a lot of spectrum in CBRS, and they'll use that to augment their current spectrum for 5G networks. Uh, so you, you, you are going to see a lot of uh, new usages of the spectrum um, within this model. And how it all shakes out and who are the biggest users of it uh, is just too early to tell at this point. Right. Wow. Okay. So that's obviously going to be a complicated system. Um, and uh, so uh, OB, it, it seems like uh, we should uh, let this play out as, as you were saying before we try to jump ahead and say, this is a proven model. Let's build new things on this concept. Right. And I would think that any, you know, if DOD wants to move forward, um, given the ambitions of some of the participants, uh, such as on the Defense Innovation Board, I would expect that they would want something much more sophisticated than CBRS moving right. forward. So it really is going to be another grand experiment, and it is going to take a long time to develop. Okay. Well, this is very informative. Um, I will put away my CB radio that I, I thought I was going to uh, rework, um, repurpose. Uh, this has been Lincoln Shorts. Um...